Okay, so a lot of you have been waiting to see what happened with this beehive. I was going to extract honey through the flow super the day before and couldn't put this 4x4 underneath the lead edge of the hive because mm -hmm. it was so hot there were too many bees bearding on the outside. Now that was actually a live feed, but today we're actually making this video ahead of time. And today is the 19th of July, and we started this on the 9th of July. So what you're looking at here happened on 9 July. Now what I do is I use a bottle jack, jack up the front. I had to come out at 5.30 in the morning to make sure there were no bees bearding or a small enough group of bees that I could still place the 4x4 there and not smash anybody in the process. So we're going to walk you through this today. When you're extracting honey from a flow super, you want to tilt it back about 2 degrees. This shows the activity at the entrance. Very hot day. Mid-90s. Direct sun from time to time. And this shows cooling activity on the landing board. And the entrance has a copper mesh there. So these bottle jacks are very inexpensive. I'm talking like $20, $21, something like that. Now we're behind the beehive. We're going to open this flow super again. Only this time we're actually going to be able to extract the honey. And I'm going to walk you through that. Plus, in the same video, we're going to be supering another hive that looks like it's ready for a flow super. And this is a close inspection of the flow frames as they are seen from the back of the hive. And if you look closely, all the cells are full of honey and they are capped with beeswax. Look here on the end, that end frame is not full, so we're not going to touch that one. The number two frame's good, number three frame's good, four frame is good. The fifth frame, nice and capped. Sixth and seventh frames to the right, we will not touch those. So it's pretty consistent that they fill their frames with honey, starting on the southeast corner first. And they work their way back across and the center out, of course. And we're going to pull some honey out of this because everybody likes to see it. And I'm going to walk you through step by step what to do with your flow super. Now, what's the difference between a flow hive and a flow super? Well, this is just the super with the honey frames in it that come from flow. The bottom boxes are standard Langstroth 10 frame boxes, which match up with the 7 frame flow hive super. And the nice aspect of it is when we have high heat like this, if these were regular frames, and in some cases foundationless frames, people in high temperature areas have problems with their frames and honey wax melting out, especially with the heat wave we have going on in the United States, northeastern United States, and this is in the state of Pennsylvania. I'm showing little particles here that sometimes you can find in the drain channel of your flow frames and just have a little screen handy there. You can catch it when it initially comes out if you want to. If not, you can also run your honey through a screen later. There's a little etching mark on the tube here that shows you exactly how deep to put it in and you want to make sure to open up as I did that bottom opening there which is a weep hole so that when there are residual drips of honey coming down after you've finished extracting, the bees can get to it and drain it off. It's also why you want to make sure to leave your hive tilted back even after you finish the extraction. That's so the honey can follow that channel to the back and the bees can reclaim it. Now this is the access to activate the flow frames. We don't want to do that all at once. We're only going to do a third to a half at first, and then we're going to do it in increments. I like to use two of the keys at one time. And then I'm going to turn them up instead of down because I like to have them out of the way so I can see what's going on with the frames while I'm extracting. Here we go. Remember, this is a very hot day. Mid 90s. That's Fahrenheit. And uh, so the honey inside is nice and hot and will come out pretty fast. There it is dripping, coming through the channel. And now in this case, I did not use my recap mason jar lid with the opening that I sometimes do with my elbows. And that's because we're in a nectar flow. The bees are satisfied with what they're bringing in, so they're not really looking to rob anybody out. So I don't have to worry about uh, the bees coming back here and jumping into my honey and starting to take it off. What kind of honey is that? Primarily clover. We could tell that because it's nice and light and golden and we also see the pollen that's coming in on the worker bees on the landing board is a dark brown color 
which matches up with what they would get from clover flowers. So we have other things in bloom also, but they're not going to bring in anything heavy. So I'm just guessing that clover is the predominant nectar source for the hundreds of acres adjacent to this property. And we can see that it's dripping down there. Bees are not injured. I'm also going to inject here uh, answers to several of the concerns that people have about flow hives. And you're going to get to see a lot today. We have the screens here. I also have these really long forceps that are made out of stainless steel. What are those for? Well, since I'm not using the recap mason jar lids and those elbows that I have, uh, there is a chance that a wasp or a bee or a fly could get into your honey as it drips into the open jars. So I want to be able to get those out right away. And that's what the forceps are for. And this is in real time. This jar is filling right up. So it's always nice to be able to do this on a hot day. The bees are challenged. We're going to do thermal shots of each of the colonies. And I want to show you some interesting things that are going on with the bees. Having a thermal camera is a big advantage. Look how fast this is coming out. People are concerned sometimes. What's the water content of that? It's really runny. Water content tested with a MISCO. And it was at 17%. So anything below 19%, lower than that, it's going to have a long shelf life. It won't ferment. So you're pretty good. Some people like to push that up to 20%. I don't do that. If it were at 20% or higher, is your honey ruined? No, but you want to take it right in and put it in a closet, in my opinion, with a dehumidifier. And you can take it down about a percentage and a half of water per day with a dehumidifier in a small space. I've done that in the past, especially in the fall when we had to take off honey so we could shut things down for winter. Sometimes it had a high water content and we could dehydrate that with a dehumidifier. This is slow motion just because it looks cool. And the honey keeps coming out. People like to see this. I'm going to speed it up here so we don't end up with the uh, 30 minute video but even on a hot day like today how long would it take to fill a quart jar like this well it generally takes about 15 minutes per jar and you can run several jars at once but you have to leave them spaced out remember we're not drawing any honey off of the first frame and we're also not going to pull any honey off of the sixth and seventh frame so how much honey do you get out of a frame a little over half a gallon so we'll fill two of these and change for each of the frames that we're going to tap here on the flow hive. Now we're speeding it up 300% just to get you through this because we have other things to look at and things I want to share with you. If you notice, right underneath this flow super, there is no queen excluder. Everyone tells you to use a queen excluder. I tell you to use a queen excluder as well. But I'm going to share with you today what I do and how I inspect a hive to make sure that it's ready for the flow super and why I'm ready to take the risk to not put a queen excluder in there. And the result is faster nectar storage inside the hive and more honey in less time. The reason is queen excluders, although they're safe and they keep your queen out and will keep her from laying eggs inside your flow super, which we never want to happen. Uh, I almost never have had a queen lay eggs. It's possible without the queen excluder. It's really cool. It goes slow out in. That is really cool. So what do you think about it? Cool. Like is, it? is it hard work? Um, yeah. Yeah, it looks really, really hard work. Yeah, it is hard work. Somebody has to do it, though. Like me and you. Yeah. So that's a four-year-old grandson there who's learning beekeeping, believe it or not. He has pretty good knowledge and he's going to be my protege here going forward. Now we're going to do thermals with this FLIR C2 camera. I've had this for a long time. This is a wonderful tool if you're keeping bees. You want to know what's going on in your hives. You can even find out where your cluster is located in wintertime unless you have heavily insulated hives. It reads surface temperature. So we're going to go around, I'm going to show you the hives, and we're going to look at the bees. But look at the honey right here, 92.5 degrees Fahrenheit. Honey temp in Celsius, for those who get angry when I use Fahrenheit, 34.88 degrees Celsius. That's what the honey temperature is as it comes out. Flows nice. 
What is the brood temperature inside a beehive? 94 to 97 degrees Fahrenheit. So the honey is right in line with that. So even on a really hot day, the bees are maintaining the interior climate of this hive. The brood is down below. We have a deep box. We have a medium super full of honey and then the flow super here. Now we're at 97.5 Fahrenheit, 36.11 Celsius on the frames themselves. All workable and within a tolerance uh, that does not harm your brood. So the bees with no top venting here, even in this heat, are keeping the interior of this hive nice and suitable for brood rearing. Now we're gonna look at this uh, flow hive that's also sitting on a stand adjacent here. And I want you to see the temperature on the high visor. 129 degrees Fahrenheit, 53.33 Celsius. The high visors provide shade and protection. The bees that move out of the hives on these hot days tend to collect in the shade of the high visor. Under the visor, 37.11 Celsius, 97.7 to 98 Fahrenheit. That's a flow hive too. We're going to look at this one a little later on, but the reason I'm featuring it right now is I'm going to pull that feeder shim off of there. And this colony is big enough and strong enough that we're going to put a flow super on it. And I'm going to show you how I do that. So now we'll go back to our hive here that we're extracting the honey from, get some thermals off the front of it. You also notice that uh, the honey no longer leaks down into the bottom and pushes out the bees. The bee behavior on the landing board and in front is perfectly normal. 113 degrees Fahrenheit direct sunlight there was a high point. Then we get down in the shade, of course. There's a good drop off, but I also want to take a look at what the temperature is coming out of that entrance reducer, which is a screen, by the way. So the bees can still pull air through it and they won't get robbed later on when foragers run out of work. 37.5 Celsius at the entrance, which is about 97 degrees Fahrenheit. And uh, 36 under the visor, 55 Celsius above the visor. Big differences here. Those visors really help. They shield the bees on the landing board and give them a place to cluster on the outside while they're trying to dehydrate that nectar and get moisture out of the hive. Here's a smaller Flow Hive 2 cedar version, 95.5 under the visor. Again, that's 35.5 Celsius, nice and shaded. Not a pile of activity there. They have a deep and a medium on, and they've already saved up enough honey to get them through winter. So we're looking at expanding them if their population increases. And if you look to the right there of the screen, on the C2 there it shows the upper end of all temperatures in the range but we're going to get right here on the entrance we're at 95 so they are pulling air out at 95 degrees which is 35.27 celsius and that's the venting temperature of the air they're pulling out primarily from their brood area now here's something i want you to see see the darker colored bees are a little cooler the lighter colored bees are the hot bees why? Because they're fanning their wings because they're working really hard and the thorax is generating heat. 42.22 degrees Celsius body temperature for the bees that are working like that. That's 109, 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So when these bees are lined up like that, even in the shade, when they're generating the air current that they need to keep the hive interior cool, they are overheating their thorax. So they actually need to take a break. They need lots of water and they need to stay cool. Now this is a hive that's been building up. This is a Saskatrass colony of bees that we installed as a package this spring. Look at the numbers here, they're really good. So we have a deep eight frame brood box at the bottom. And then I'm gonna pull a couple of frames here. Remember this is a really hot day. Look how calm the bees are, they're pretty good. And we're gonna pull some frames and make sure that they're not using this medium super for brood. If that's true, if it's nothing but honey storage, nectar storage, then I'll be able to put a flow super on this without a queen excluder. That's because it's extremely rare for the queen to cross over a full box of honey and start laying in the upper areas. But we do have to do something about the population in this colony. They are pretty loaded. If you don't do anything, you just let them finish off all these frames with honey 
Then they could become honey bound. The queen could run out of places to lay her eggs. That's when she hunts for random cells to put eggs in and we want to avoid that. So we're pulling this. This is a white acorn heavy wax frame is what we started with. You can see they've drawn it out everywhere. Good activity here. Now Fred, what the heck? Why are you wearing those goatskin gloves? Well, the thing is, the day after this, I have a critical photography assignment to do, and I cannot have fat fingers and hands being stung up by bees. So I'm taking extra precautions today. When I have a commitment like that, I cannot afford to have reactions to bee stings. So I'm just being extra careful today, although these bees are very calm. There's always one or two that just want to let you have it for no apparent reason whatsoever. We also are not smoking them, if you notice. I was using one-to-one -one sugar syrup and three teaspoons per quart of Honey Bee Healthy as my calming element. And we're looking at nothing but honey here. We're also going to pull these better comb frames. Why? Well, because it's super hot. We want to see if they're deforming at all. You do run the risk with better comb, which comes from Better Bee. If you're in the hot climates, Desert Southwest, for example, I have viewers in Texas that have problems with their better comb sagging, drooping, deforming in high heat. So we're going to pull a couple of these out and we're going to look at those too. As I said again, very calm bees. Normally I would just be wearing my nitrile gloves, which are like surgical gloves. They give you clean fingers, good dexterity. But if you have to wear super protective gloves, I highly recommend goatskin gloves over calfskin or rawhide gloves. The bees don't mind the smell of goatskin as much as they mind the smell of real leather from cattle. Who knows why? So here we go. That is a better comb frame. It looks just like regular honeycomb, doesn't it? It's a synthetic pre-drawn comb that the bees work just like their own honeycomb. And there's no deformation going on, but I want you to notice that these frames are wire reinforced. So if you're in a hotter climate and you're concerned that your bees won't be able to keep that interior cool as they are here today, you need to run them on the wire frames, not those toothpick supports, which are probably only suitable for the north. And so we're going to push them all over here so that later when I visit this uh, medium super, and I painted these kind of a mint color to remind viewers and people that I teach about bees that these are for the bees to get through winter, not for people. That's going to be full of honey. Very tempting to pull that out of there and extract the honey. But now we're going to put a flow super on. Brand new, never been used. Remember, we put a brand new colony of bees in here. They were a package this spring. And, uh, Saskatraz bees do really well with the flow supers. I'm also going to explain what I do to prepare these frames to get the bees to use them. Now keep in mind, I'm going rogue here. I am not using queen excluders. All of your flow hives come with queen excluders and they recommend that you use them. But I have that barrier. I have a medium super full of honey first. So this is the flow hive two six frame polonia wood. This stuff grows really fast. So if you like to stay green and use renewable resources, these trees grow so fast that even these wide planks that these hives are made out of are probably from a three or four year old tree, if you can believe that. Look it up, very interesting stuff. Also, you notice my inner cover there has no venting. There is a food opening on that, but remember when your honey supers are on, no feeding the bees. Now they are doing a great job of bringing in resources from the environment. As I said, normally in July, we would not have honey to take off. So it's a weird year in a good way. They are finding all that they need. And what's about to bloom? All the sunflowers are about to open up. We're going to get another boost here in pollen because pollen seems low they have a hard time getting a lot of pollen from the clover but they will continue to get nectar from the clover then they'll get pollen other bees will get pollen from your sunflowers so here we go it's all put together flow hive two six frame which matches the eight frame langstroth this is my favorite design we're going to pull the side off of here and uh 
Of course, I laser etched that on there. It's my logo, the way to be. And uh, later we're going to come back and look at this. You're going to see what it looks like in 10 days, all in one video. Now notice the entrance here, a little congested, right? I always put in screens now. I don't use solid entrance reducers anymore. And that's because the bees pull so much air through those screens that it's a huge benefit. So if you notice some of these bees that are venting are clinging to the screen and they're pulling air out. And they always tend to do it that way. They fan the air out and away from the hive and then cooler air gets drawn in. Not through the top though, because none of my hives have top vents. And we went all the way through winter without top vents as well. We did insulate the top board and that's about it. So these bees are collected underneath that hive visor. I'll put a link to the hive visors down below so you can see how to make your own if you're interested in doing that. And I like to see the bees up close. See how healthy they are, see what their behaviors are. Good batch of guards here. A lot going on. We're also going to go back and visit the hive that we just took the honey off of to see what their behavior is at the landing board. I use copper screen. I also use aluminum screen, which this is. I don't recommend the fabric screen because the bees tend to pull it out. Now this is the landing board of the hive that we just pulled the honey off of. What kind of bees are these? Well, these bees were a small swarm that was collected late season last year. And they're doing well on their own. They have a nice wide opening there, high population, copper screen at the entrance there. And again, we have bees clinging to the screen and drawing air through it. I have to get this four by four out of here and pull it off of this bottle jack. The cool thing too is when you lower this jack, it's very gradual and the bees feel no impact when it comes down. So nobody gets excited. Tiny beard there underneath. And that's because they were there when I put it in place and they just stayed there the whole time. And eventually they'll probably move out and come up the front too as the day cools down a little. But remember we're in the mid 90s. And we have a deep and two mediums there. Now we're back. Look at this. Listen to how calm everybody is. 19th of July, 10 days later. So we're going to do a follow up and we're going to see if they're using those frames and again I'm going to share with you what I do to get the bees to use Flow Super Frames. I'm going to pull this panel off, take a look on the side here. And they're all over it. They're working up the joints. So what you want to do is look at the joints between your flow frames here and you'll see that that's being waxed up. Depending on the angle of the camera, these can appear misaligned. People that view my videos often say, oh, you didn't close them. Oh, they're misaligned. No, it's an optical illusion. When you look straight on, they are aligned up perfect hexagonals. And uh, again, they work their way from the full depth out and they wax them up. And that's what we're looking at here. Wax worker bees. They're young. It's hot. Bees need heat, they need nectar, and uh, they have to be young enough to be wax workers. Now we're going to look at the back here. I'm trying to hold the camera while I open this up. Again, this is that Paloma wood, Polonia, however you want to say it. Brand new frames being worked for the first time. And it looks like these bees are doing great. So remember the box below them is full of honey. Most of it's capped. And now they're working these frames and they're moving freely without a queen excluder because as I've said before, where I live, that accelerates their use of these flow supers. And it's extremely rare while the queen has space down in the deep box, which is the first box, extremely rare to have her depart from that area and lay her eggs up in the flow supers. But I have to tell you and caution you that it could happen. You'll have to be vigilant and make sure that you don't, uh, open or operate flow frames that possibly have larvae in them. Now these bees again look all the way full depth into the cell there working up the joints. These joints are made out of food grade plastic. Very durable. Another question that I get is how long do these flow super frames last? Well I don't really know. I retired my first frame 
uh, that I used that came out 2015, put into service 2016, and I shelved it for the final time this spring. So it wasn't worn out, they just kind of look dirty. I have not arrived at a final method yet for really cleaning them up and making them look like new again. I don't even know if that's possible. Notice too that the cells are angled down, so as they put their nectar in there, it goes towards the center and does not leak out. That is exactly what bees do with real honeycomb. So I was trying to look at their abdomens here to see if we could see some wax scales. I did not see any, but they are working wax because you can see when they get in there and wobble their head side to side and work their mandibles, they are sealing those joints. And this is a small, remember this matches the eight frame Langstroth. But now this is gonna be cool. It's been 10 days, right? Since we took the honey off of this particular hive, which is a Langstroth, two medium boxes on that one, and then just a Flow Super. Look at the honey in here. They have accumulated this in that 10 day period. Remember, we didn't touch the right two frames. They appear pretty much the same. The left frame all the way over, pretty much the same. Look at all the honey they've put in those frames. Now let's go to the hive next door and see how they've built up. This is another seven frame, which matches the 10 frame Langstroth. Look at all the honey in here. Could you extract that? No, don't even think about it because it's not capped. Stay away from that honey. This one here, it looks like two frames are almost capped. All the rest of them are almost full. This is July 19th. I have never seen honey brought in at this time of year on this scale. Now what about the weaver bees? Are they just as good? They're pretty much on par. Weaver, Saskatraz, and local bees that I collected last year as swarms. Many miles from the apiary, by the way, so they weren't my own bees. We have other things coming up this year. So I hope you enjoyed that. I don't do anything to prep the frames. The bees just use them. I don't spritz them with sugar water. I don't wax them. I don't put honeycomb on them. Flow supers, they work with the right bees. Saskatraz, weaver, and feral colonies from your area. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend.